to another show of the Living Well Radio. We want to thank you for joining us this Wednesday at 1 p.m. And don't forget, you can find us here every Wednesday at 1 p.m. on KATV.org and right here on 89.3 FM in Anchorage. And you can also look us up on our Facebook page at Living Well Radio where we post, post our shows weekly there as well. And you can find the kind of the history of all of our episodes. Uh-huh. And don't forget to find us on iTunes now and subscribe to our podcast. You can find it under Living Well. So lots of different mediums to, yes. to find Living Well, and we sure appreciate you following. And we welcome your comments and suggestions for things that you would like to hear about. Um, Future guests. Absolutely. That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. It would be great. And uh, They can find all the, uh, the blogs that have been written at akchristianwomensministry.com. They're yes. They're all there. And speaking of blogs, we're kind of continuing with that series mm-hmm. today where we are um, getting to know the voices behind the blogs. Mm-hmm. So many of you have probably been following the blog, and if you haven't, um, Betty's giving you the website so you can look that up and follow it there. But um, we're just enjoying getting to know some of these writers and their heart behind some of these posts and uh, just bringing a voice to that. So we want to welcome back to the studio today, Rosalind Lasley. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being willing to come back My this pleasure. week and talk with us a little bit about Mother's Day and just all yeah. things Mother's Day motherhood and kids and all of the lovelies you that know, surround funny. that role. When I was little, if you asked me what I wanted to do when I grew up, I would say I would just want to be a mom. That's all. That's it. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. <laughs> <laughs> do any of us? Well, I don't know. I think if you did, you might. Yeah, you might have second thoughts. <laughs> it's like, we should get a puppy, and then you're like, that was a terrible idea. <laughs> I'm just well, kidding. because when you say, all I want to be as a mom, that really doesn't end with a period. It's more of like a dot, 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 oh, dot, 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 mm-hmm. something. Like, <laughs> yeah, Continuation. challenge accepted. Yes. You know, people like have these big, giant careers that they want, and I just wanted to be a wife and a mom, and that's what I do. Well, plus you also work outside the I home. I do work, and sometimes I work with my kids there, so if you ever call... The place where I work, and you hear children, um, it is a very small family-owned business. <laughs> Literally, the kids are there. <laughs> that's a that's a blessing that you it can is, do it's that. It's hard sometimes. I'm sure. It, it is definitely a blessing, but sometimes it's really difficult. Yeah. How many children do you have, Rosalind? I have three living and one in heaven. Cammie, how many children do you have? I have three children. And I have four. You have four. Mm-hmm. Wow. I know. And you're on the other side of things, so right. we are very sort encouraged of. that we're going to make it through. Yes, you will. <laughs> and your you, kids turned out all right. So I think so. Hope. <laughs> I think so. Uh, they're pretty good kids. I like your kids. Now, uh, you know, I'm working on grandchildren, and they're the best ever. I can't wait to be a grandma. That is, like, on top of my bucket list. I just want to <laughs> be a grandma. I'm not even kidding. I'm, <laughs> I'm so serious. <laughs> <laughs> Might not be that far away. You know, last no. week you were talking about getting married young and you encouraged that. I know, so I'm like, your I own daughter. I'm in my forties. That's right. My mom was oh, I think my mom was in her forties, but my dad was even younger. I think my dad was like thirty nine when my brother had his first kid. Well let's hope that uh, Maya waits just a little while. Yeah, like in my forties is good. <laughs> <laughs> So you wrote this blog post called A Love Letter to My Daughter on Her First Day of Sixth Grade. Mm-hmm. Take us take us to that place that um, that just kind of prompted this post and what you, made you want to write about this. Well, if you read the blog, it goes through, um, she'd been asking me for a long time to let her shave her legs, and I just wasn't ready for that. Like, I feel like that's the first step in becoming a young woman, and I'm like, I cannot handle that right now. Um, and so she was just patient and waited and waited and waited and waited uh, and she did ask me when i was like 800 years pregnant with the baby and i'm like girl i can't even shave my own legs so you're just gonna have to wait a little while and then i was too tired to even deal with it so it bought me a little bit more time um but then finally i was like you know she's waited and she's respected me with me telling her to wait and so finally i decided to okay we can do this together and then i was just like a big old ball of emotion after that like shaving cream and tears everywhere <laughs> Plus, I used her dad's dull razor, so that's probably why I had extra tears. <laughs> what do you think is so monumental about going into sixth grade or into junior high? I feel, feel like that's like your last step of being a little kid. And, I mean, it helps that I really love her teacher, and I really liked my sixth grade teacher. It's so much so that um, it seems silly because we had a lot of really amazing people that came and visited me when I had my accident. But... Every day it was like a little treat, like somebody would knock on the door and you open it and you're like, oh, who's there? And it was my sixth grade teacher and I never expected that she would have come all the way up to the hospital to visit me when I had my accident. So just to know that she was a part of my life then and still as an adult just made me think of like how important this time is in my life too. What What is your relationship like with your oldest daughter? 
I see a lot of myself in her. I'm a middle child, but the oldest girl. And so I'm kind of like the mother hen, like to make sure everything's a certain way. I was a bossy sister in the tattletale. And um, she's very much that way. And she's very sensitive like me. And um, she, yeah, sometimes I have to tell her like, I'm the mom, you know, I'm here. Like you're used to being the mom when I'm in the shower or something, but right now I'm here and I'm capable. So um, yeah, I just see a lot of her myself and like her tenderness and the way that she loves her sisters and she's funny but she's witty so it like it catches you by surprise like <laughs> me you know like you never know what I'm gonna say <laughs> I, I remember having um a similar meltdown but my daughter was much older mm -hmm. it was in January and she was going to graduate high school mm -hmm. in May and I became a basket case mm -hmm. because I kept thinking oh my goodness I only have five more months left to pour into her life have I done my job mm -hmm. and I be, in my mind I begin to make a mental list did I tell her this and did I tell her that have I taught her how to cook have I taught her how to do laundry have I taught her how to have her own relationship with God mm -hmm. have I you know and it was just like oh my goodness yeah and I feel like so much of because that's all I've really all I've ever hoped for in life is that I want to be a wife and a mom that there's so much of how I see myself and value who I am as a woman and the way that I am as a mother. And when you have your kids going through life and they're experiencing things, sometimes you're like, I don't know how to handle this, whether it's good or bad. Like, how do I teach my daughter to shave her legs when I'm not ready? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even, I think I shave my legs with my grandpa's razor downstairs in my grandparents' bathroom. And that's when I'm like, let me help you. <laughs> it burns really bad. Um, <laughs> But yeah, there's just so many things that I had never realized. And then you look back and think, well, did I do this right? And thankfully, we have a couple more kids to like, well, I messed it up that time, but let's try this on. <laughs> three chances. Well, somebody told me once, kids are like pancakes. Sometimes you have to mess up the first couple to get it right. And I was like, that is so true. Sorry, Maya. <laughs> That's too cute. It's true, though. Rosalind, do you have somebody that you go to for advice? It depends on what the question is, but yes, um, I ask Betty a lot of things because she's raised daughters. Um, what has that meant to you to have somebody to go to, to just not that you're going to take all of their advice, mm -hmm. but just have somebody kind of bounce things off of? I feel like there's women ahead of you in life that have wisdom to share if you would just ask it. And it's not coming from a place of perfection. And that's why you feel like you can ask those questions because it's not coming from a place of, hey, I had it all figured out. But this is what it was like for me and my daughter. And this is what we learned along the way. And this is what we would do different. Or um, I had a child that was similar and this is how I parented them. And this is what worked and this is what didn't. And, you know, it's funny how you have three kids and with the three par same parents and they're all totally completely different from mm -hmm. from pregnancy through all through life they're just totally different people and so even though you're like okay I've done this before but you're starting from scratch with the next one yeah in what ways would you say your oldest is like your husband you said that she has the tenderness of you and your wit I, hopefully she doesn't listen to this then <laughs> she has his voice well she did when she was little he cannot keep a tune for anything and so she would sing along and he would just like make this face like oh she sings like me <laughs> like yeah but it's better now she's had some solos and stuff so it's better but for a long time she sang like a dad and we're like whoa <laughs> that's cute. and she's very athletic like him like i am not athletic i'm not competitive and she very much is so she's very tiny she is very tiny very she always tiny. has been her friend was over one day and her uncle said, is that your babysitter? Like, no, they're the same age. <laughs> so she's just a little baby thing. What's one of your greatest fears as she goes into the teen years? That she'll make some of the same mistakes I did and try and fill those voids in her heart with people and boys and not the Lord. And some of my fears is like having to be honest with her about the things that I messed up on because those are the things that sometimes you still work on trying to forgive yourself for those things yeah say so like don't make those mistakes that i did and it comes like your tears are genuine so your kids see like wow you're an adult and that still bothers you that hopefully they'll listen like yeah i don't know yeah yeah and i hope that she'll be able to talk to me as she grows up because there's times in my life that i wish i had a different relationship with my mom and i do love you mom if you're listening but there's some things we just i feel like i couldn't talk to her about it and so I hope that my approach of springing things on her isn't so abrasive that she feels like she can't talk to me mm -hmm. and that she'll be surrounded by godly women. So if she can't talk to me, she has um, a little bit women that are a little bit further ahead in life that somebody other than her peers that have some experience that will point her back to Christ with their answers to her. Yeah. 
You know, I I think that when you're parenting, I mean, any of your children, but particularly your teen girls, you can't help but parent from that standpoint of mm-hmm. the consequences that you suffered from the mistakes that you mm-hmm. made. And, you know, I speak from that from my own life as well. And you just can't help but do that. Mm-hmm. It's it's our own experiences, and we, we parent from that. We do not want our children to make the same mistakes we did. But even, but. like, there's sin mistakes, of course, but then there's just relational mistakes. Like, sure. don't be a mean girl. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, don't fall in that trap of being that nitpicky girl that's worried about what everybody else is doing or what they're wearing or who they're friends with or what boys they like. Like, if they don't like the same boys as you, great. You don't, you don't want your friends liking the same boys as you anyway. So, yeah. yeah just being overly critical, mm-hmm. yeah, that's definitely a, a problem. How are, how are you teaching her to not be a mean girl? I said, don't be a mean girl. <laughs> I read the text on her iPad, and then I took it away for the rest of her life. Are you Probably. giving her specifics to follow or just? Usually it's just seeing a situation and explaining, like, how I would do it different. Like, um, there's a particular friend that I see in certain situations, and I just say, you know, she's kind of critical of these other girls. Like, she's worried about what they're wearing or who they're hanging out with. And, like, don't you realize that? people aren't going to like you when you're like that. Like, nobody's going to want to be your friend if you're just telling them how bad their hair looks. Like, why don't you find things that you can love about people? Because, I mean, your hair, in 10 years, your hair is all you guys are going to have bad hair. So, you know, (laughs) just worry about other things. And I don't know if she always will listen to me, but. Well, I think the most important aspect of that is setting that example, Mm -hmm. you know. um, And I think it helps, too, that, like, I don't sound, try to say this from a conceited point of view, but I'm still friends with the girls I was friends with in junior high. Like, my same group of friends, we're still close. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that says a lot about the friendships that you make. Like, they are important, and they do shape who you are in life. And um, if you surround yourself with girls that are similar, that are, you know, looking for the Lord, and they're um, maintaining certain values that you have in place, then it makes it easier for you as you go through life. I know this um, This is on our before Mother's Day, mm-hmm. and we were mostly talking about mothers, but I'm just curious about um, the relationship your daughters have with their dad. Oh, I always, as bad as it is, I always joke and say if things didn't work out, they would always pick their dad. <laughs> and they don't, they're like, yeah, we totally would. Like, he, they, he just loves them in a way that I can't even fathom. Like, I've understood, it's going to make her cry. I understand God's love by seeing my husband's love for my kids. Because I didn't know what that was like at home, like what a father's love should look like. And so I've learned that from watching him love our daughters. That's so sweet. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It it really is. So sweet. I know when I was growing up, um, my mother was the greatest example I could have of how to be a wife, how to be a mother. Mm -hmm. Uh, She taught me how to cook and how to clean. You know, she, uh, my mother was what you would call... Um, the typical Southern lady, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, she, she was very much a lady. And uh, and I don't know, I, is is that's what I try to do in my home with my children. But, you know, that's been uh, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, is that still happening in homes? You See, know? my mom was a single mom, so I look at my mom and think, I don't know how she did it. Like, we were all pretty close in age. My kids are all five years apart because I need, like, that five-year gap to, like, okay, I think I could do this again. And I'm like, what was I thinking? Um, but my mom, you know, she was making sure her homework was done and somebody needed money for some activity and trying to keep food on the table and all the bills paid. And I just look at my mom and think, man, I have no idea how you do it because when their dad's gone, I'm like, who is going to put you to bed? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't – I just – she's amazing to me. And I mean, sure, there's things that – you know, growing up, you think wish would have been different, or even my mom the other day we had to talk about how she wish she would have done certain things different. But you do what you can at the time, and then you ask for forgiveness when you've messed it up. And that, I think that goes for any situation. I think that's important for a, a parent, mom, or dad to mm-hmm. realize sometimes we do have to apologize mm-hmm. for the things we say or how we say them to our children for no mm-hmm. other reason than to teach them that there's going to times when they're going to have to say, I'm sorry. There's a I lot of humility um, by being humble, by saying, you know what, I yeah, I'm your mom, but I totally got this situation wrong, and I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry for how I spoke to you, or I'm sorry that I overreacted about this, or I'm sorry that I was short to you because I had a rough day at work, um, whatever the situation may be. It's hard. Like, saying I'm sorry is probably one of the hardest things I ever do. And you, could, my husband will say that. Like, she will not say she's sorry unless she means it. So mm. having to apologize is hard for me because sometimes I'm not sorry. <laughs> and if I ever tell you I'm sorry, I genuinely mean it because I will not say it if I don't mean it. 
I think, too, um, you know, it's such a delicate balance between being your daughter's friend and then being mm-hmm. her mother. And I'll never forget um, somebody sharing with me when she was just kind of mentoring some younger girls. And they just quickly told her, you know, we have friends. We need we need a mentor. Mm-hmm. And so that tells me that our young girls and even our daughters, they, they desire that. And as difficult as it can be at times to be that. Um, we need to realize that they do have their friends and mm-hmm. they need us to be their mom. And for me, one of my biggest struggles as a mom is wanting to protect my kids from everything um, in situations that are hurtful or for even, a, um, I was just telling somebody the other night, like when I lost the baby, I didn't want to tell the kids, I didn't want them to see me cry. I mean, they're obviously we were going to know that the baby wasn't coming, but like, how do you tell them that? And how do you let them see your heart be broken? Cause you're their mom and you're supposed to be the protector. And then here you are falling apart. Um, But in those hard times, in those situations where you have to ask for forgiveness or the times that, like, life is falling apart around you, um, that's when God is real to them. They see you hold on to your faith, and you live it more than just what you say. Um, And our oldest daughter never really liked to talk about when we lost the baby, and she still doesn't talk about it much. But um, I remember one day she came home from school telling me about a conversation she'd had with her teacher, and she said, you know, Mom— God grew your faith when you lost the baby, and I saw it so much. And I just thought, well, I'm glad I let you see me be a big old mess because God was real to you then. Yeah, that's so true. Mm-hmm. So even the mistakes that we make along the way or the the things that we don't get right or when you're not sure how to fix a situation, like, I don't have the answers for you, sometimes you're not meant to. Yeah, and, you know, I know that I pray very often asking God to fill the gaps Mm because I know I leave many of them you know you can only pull from what he has shown Mm -hmm. you through your own life and your own experiences and um, that's the best we can do Mm -hmm. how do you um, how do you teach your children or point your children to um, press into God when things are not going right when when I mean all of our kids are going to be hurt Mm -hmm. and they're all going to be disappointed uh, there's people that are going to be mean to them. It's going to happen because mm-hmm. not everybody loves your children the way that you do. That was a, I remember that the day I learned that and it broke my heart mm-hmm. to realize that someone didn't love my cuddly, sweet, squishy baby the <laughs> same way I did. Yeah. But they don't. It's not their child. Mm-hmm. So what do you do? Both of you, I'm asking both of you, what do you do and how do you, how do, you do it to te- show your children during these times to press in closer to God. I think I'm still figuring out what that looks like because, I mean, our kids are all different ages. Maya is almost 12, um, Ava is 6, and the baby's 1. And so I'm still figuring out what that looks like as somebody, I mean, the 6-year-old will observe some things, but the 11-year-old's going to notice a lot more. And so I think just being genuine and, I mean, for me, it's like I said, it's a struggle between protecting them from everything and then oversharing because situations eventually resolve and you don't want like if you're having an argument with someone or somebody's hurt your feelings there's a difference between letting them see how God worked the situation out and how you tried to make things right or how you sought God in prayer and oversharing to the point where they've made their own judgments or um, have apprehensions about the situation because you've overshared Mm -hmm. I think for me um, you know when the kids are younger you're you're counseling them you're telling them what god might be doing you're kind of mm-hmm. teaching them his ways and how he might be using something and then now as i'm parenting more of a young adult i find myself really trying to catch myself from just offering counsel right away and i'm trying to ask questions mm-hmm. what is god trying to show you versus telling her what he might be mm-hmm. doing mm-hmm. and so that causes her to really kind of search and look and find god mm-hmm. in whatever that situation might be and I also like to um, involve the kids some in the ministries where we serve. Um, we live in a generation that's all about me. You know, there's selfies yes. and there's what, how do I feel about this situation or what does this benefit me? And so, you know, I, I mean, sometimes I'll let the kids, or Maya, because she's old enough to read and keep an attention for a long blog, but I let her read the blogs I write and what, what's on my heart. And sometimes she's just like, well, okay, that was way too much. Um or, you know, when we have women over for Forget Me Not Ministry, which is a um, miscarriage support group, um, they help with keeping an eye on the littler kids downstairs and playing with them and teaching them that 
serving the Lord looks like this, opening your home and letting kids play with your toys that you really like and you didn't really want anyone to touch or keeping the house picked up because we're about to have people over or offering somebody that's new to our home a cup of water, you know, just um, involving them in what you're doing and how you're serving the Lord and letting them hear conversations of how God's working in the lives of people that you're praying for um, because that's what makes it real to them. Like Mm -hmm. they're seeing God at work rather than you're just telling them. Because you can tell them until you're blue in the face, but if it doesn't seem like it's real and it's not being lived out in your home, then it's not going to make any difference. Mm-hmm. As moms, were there things that, and are there things that you specifically uh, want to be sure that you teach your children? Mm-hmm. My biggest fear as a mom is that they won't know fully how much I love them and how much the Lord loves them. That there will be a point where they doubt that. But how do I show them that? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm having a hard time uh, summarizing it into one thing. Of course, there's just so many things. I think my greatest fear would be that they just want to try it their own way. Mm. You know, even though it looks like they're on that path, that's just mm-hmm. such a fear that something would cause them um, to just feel right in their own eyes in a situation mm-hmm. versus looking for God's discernment and direction. I don't know how you teach that. You know, so much of knowledge has to come through experience and I think that's mm-hmm. the hardest part for me as a mom as I in fact somebody gave me this visual recently where you kind of want to take your kid you see where they're at and you literally want to pick them up and you want to put them where they you think they should be you know mm-hmm. especially as they're coming into the young adult mm-hmm. years right buddy mm-hmm. <laughs> yes but if you did that you would rob them of that journey mm-hmm. of finding God through that and so that's not our job as a parent you know you want to teach them in the way that they should go so and sometimes you're playing it, God that way. Maybe God's like, no, actually, Cammie, I wanted her way over here. And like, well, yes, sorry about that. exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So that just causes me as a mom to really turn in and, and search God in my parenting. And because you, you can really derail things by over parenting mm-hmm. and taking God's role. And mm-hmm. that, that's a great point. And I was talking with a friend even last night about how. As a mom, for me, I just want to fix everything. I want everything to be perfect. I don't want my kids to ever be sad or to ever need anything. Or like if they're, you know, just want everything to be just so. And then when you can't fix these situations or you can't make these decisions for them and you just can't do it, it feels hopeless or helpless or it's just hard. And then you realize if you could do all those things, they would have no need for God. If you could make everything right in their life, they would have no need to go to God because mom fixed it. So in a way, like all those inadequacies, mm. And me as a woman or as a mom or as a wife is perfect because that's how God intended it because he can do those things in their life that I can't. And he's meant to. Yeah. It's like, I'm glad I messed you up because now I need Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and I'm always reminded that God gave his children the perfect setting, Mm -hmm. the perfect parameters Mm -hmm. and boundaries, Mm -hmm. and they didn't please him. Mm -hmm. And so I try to be mindful that, you know, you can set it all up. Mm Mm-hmm. They still but they still have way. a choice. Yeah. They That's still... painful to realize, mm-hmm. and uh, but it's reality. I know I've loved being a mom. You know, my children are uh, the most precious gift uh, that God has ever given to me. And they're each one different. You know, they each have their own, their own views, their own thoughts. And uh, this stage of life where we're at, you know, I'm easing out of the parent, parenting portion and easing into the friend portion. Mm. Uh, But you never stop being a mom. I saw this quote once that says, grandparents and grandchildren get along so well because they have the same enemy. (laughs) (laughs) And it made me just like, that's why I love my grandma so much. (laughs) (laughs) What does that look like, Betty? Can you share just like a a situation or a hypothetical situation of, I never really thought of it that way, where you would transfer out of parenting and back into the kind of the friend world. Uh, I think it just happens over time. Is uh, one of my daughters last night? Was it last night? Yes, she was talking to me, and, and before she left, she said, "You know, Mom, you can talk to me. We are friends." <laughs> and I thought, "Oh, I never really thought about that." Hmm. And That's sweet so, just do um, you know my my children still come to me when something's on their mind or they can't, they don't know how to fix it or what to do. You know, they still come to me or call me and say, "Mom, what should I do about this?" But then we still, you know, we can go out shopping and just laugh and giggle and have mm-hmm. a good time. We always have a good time when we're all together. We love being together. And um, my children love each other's children, you know. So 
I think it just happens over the course of time. Nothing that I planned mm-hmm. and, and nothing that I'd really thought about until she said it last night. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, okay. So if you could go, uh, if you could go back and do anything different in mm-hmm. your parenting, what would it be? I would play more with my children. Mm-hmm. That's something I struggle with because mm-hmm. I work outside of the home. So for me, it's like there's so much to accomplish in this two short hours before you have to be to bed. Like you have to be fed and you have to have your homework done and somebody needs a bath because it's been like five days. And, mm-hmm. you know, like, and there's oh. no clean underwear. <laughs> yeah, because mom can't do laundry on Saturday. Oh, well, because just rewear those. Yeah, we'll do like, borrow your sisters. I'm sorry she's smaller than you. <laughs> like, It's okay to have a wedgie for a day. <laughs> yeah, like whatever. It's borrow like... dads. That's what I do. You know? <laughs> They're so roomy. So how do you do that? I mean, because here we are with, four minutes of time, but I would imagine nine out of 10 women, nine out of 10 moms struggle with that same thing. And it's tough because it's like, I should play with them more, but then you have to juggle like, okay, this has to be done too. So which do you pick? Like mm-hmm. you can't really play laundry. Um, yeah. So well, that's something Do you have any I'm advice for us on that, Betty? You say you would go back and play more. Would you have sacrificed the things? I would that, have how sacrificed, would you have done that? Um, keeping my house as clean. Oh, you should see my house. <laughs> not a problem. <laughs> or I would have sacrificed. Uh, I used to, I can remember, I would not go to bed and leave dirty dishes in my sink. Not a problem with I would either. give that up, and I would play more with my kids. Hmm. And then just use, like, one day out of the week to do all of that stuff? Uh, Paper I plates? I don't know. Paper we ha- plates, We've had a maybe. lot of McDonald's the last two weeks because of the pageant. Like, we're not only home long <laughs> enough to quick eat some McDonald's and then be right out the uh-huh. door again. Sometimes I wish that I could just have somebody follow me, literally, for, I don't know, I think three days would be sufficient. You know, I'm pointing out, don't do this, do not this. Not me, I would cry. I would not like that. <laughs> I would, could really use that. I'm like, can you just pick up the stuff behind me? That would be great. <laughs> you know, the, um, where that might have been my shortcomings, mm-hmm. that was my husband's strong point. Mm-hmm. Yes. So he filled in the gap there. That's he was a, too. the fun person in our family. That's why they would pick him if things didn't yes. work out. They might, I spank, he'll play. <laughs> my children would 10 to 1 rather go any place with their dad mm-hmm. as with me because it was just fun time. Whatever they wanted, dad would do. And mama was mm-hmm. the one. I know. No, we can't do that. Yeah, no, our we kids can't are like do hiding that. in the racks at the grocery store. I'm like, is this what you do when you're with your dad? And he'll take all of them to the store. He doesn't care. That's because he's not watching any of them. Oh, mine would <laughs> go to the grocery store with us with the, all the kids. I'm embarrassed to tell you this. <laughs> he would go. Uh, at one end of the aisle, and one of the daughters would have a cart. He would throw things into the cart. They made a game out of it. See, I remember he watching him throw uh, loaves of bread just down the aisle, and I would go somewhere else. <laughs> I was so horrified. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. But he made it fun. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he made it fun for the kids all the time. Mm-hmm. See, I guess my husband tends to be the more, you know, the, the stern role player in, in that aspect of things. But the funny thing is, is so they all kind of think, oh, go with dad to do that. But then they come back with the most amazing stories and they had all these desserts and everything. So And everyone's wearing an elf costume. And, yeah, you know, <laughs> exactly. Whose idea was that, the elf costumes, by the way? It was my grandma's. <laughs> Are you serious? No <laughs> lie. <laughs> I have a grandma. Pebbles, like that. if you're listening, you know it was you. She <laughs> shipped them all up here. <gasps> that is no hilarious. way. And I thought for sure they weren't going to fit. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when I saw that they were a little bit of a slim fit. You know, we got some oh, bigger fellows in our house. <laughs> <laughs> Very just, stretchy. Just a oh, little <laughs> big. Just a little big fellas. I don't know if Makali will listen to this, but we're thinking of wearing them to DC <laughs> in May. <laughs> to pick do her it. Up. You have to get her Isn't mom with right? Christmas You're, you're going to make your son do that. <laughs> no if comment. he does that, he is a good boy. <laughs> I am telling you, you need to do something special. Can I just say him. it is still in his closet? <laughs> he didn't burn it, so there's a hope. See? <laughs> I thought it was great. I did too. I'm like, I wish somebody picked me up from the airport like that. It'd be the best day ever. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. I loved your husband. He couldn't get on the escalator. <laughs> He had a pulled hammy for weeks after that. <laughs> he was not fit for splits. <laughs> but it was worth it. It was so To worth see her face trying to else, run from you. Like, Remember when we all picked you up at the airport dressed like elves? Mm-hmm. Worth It'd be it. be a great thing to show at somebody's wedding. Oh, it would, uh-huh. wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe go to her wedding like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be fun for a minute. Mm, for a for minute. For a whole minute. <laughs> One whole minute. <laughs> Those are good times. Yes, they are. It's all about memories. <laughs> that's for sure. Mm. See, that, that's exactly right. It's memories. I hope that my children, I hope I have made good memories for them. And uh, they can look back and say, remember, Mom, remember when we did this? And now my grandchildren are saying, 
my grandchildren call me Nina, and they'll say, Nina, tell me a story about when I was little. Hmm. Oh. Nina, tell me another story. And they called my husband Tata. They'll say, tell me a story about Tata hmm. when, when I sat in his lap. That's sweet. You know, so I, I love being able to have memories. And um, my youngest, Nicole, is fantastic for taking videos. She's got videos of when... Uh, Danae, the oldest grandchild, was just little and singing, and none of the rest of us have them. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's just great memories. Mm -hmm. You know, we were watching one yesterday of her singing some little song, and it was just so cute, but it's, it's a great memory. You and don't that, realize how much you're going to appreciate capturing those. That's right, until they're 12, 15, 25, and 30. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. My youngest will sit there and watch family home videos like <laughs> a movie. She watches them all the time before she was born. She loves to see what life was like. That's funny. Before she was born and then in her early years. It's really My cute. granddaughter do the same thing. They go uh, on the computer. Uh, we have all of our photos on the computer and they will go to the specific spot and they love looking at pictures of them when they were babies or when their mom and dad got married mm -hmm. or they think that's the greatest thing ever. I love it. So I Maybe it's a legacy. I yeah, used to write down absolutely. my kids' meltdowns when they're three years old because <laughs> I sometimes take pictures too because if you can't laugh, then it's really not going to be fun. It'll mm -hmm. ruin your day. But now all my Facebook on this day memories are like what Ava's meltdown was for the day and it makes me laugh. Like, you <laughs> cried because you didn't like that I had my hair in ponytail or whatever it would be for the day because caterpillars don't turn into butterflies. Like, yes, they do. <laughs> That's cute. Well, it's been a fun Living Well show today. I've sure enjoyed it. Thank Me you too. so much for coming, Rosalind. And this is really what we just want to be about, isn't it, buddy? Mm -hmm. The objective is just to create conversation mm -hmm. and just discuss all things that just kind of penetrate and affect and impact our lives as women and moms and wives and all the different roles and capacities that God's blessed us with fulfilling. So mm -hmm. it's great to have conversation about it. Yes, it is. Thank you, Rosalind. You're welcome. Happy Mother's Day thank to you. both of you ladies. <laughs> yes, that's right. Happy Mother's Day. Absolutely. And we want to thank all of you who have joined us today for this episode of Living Well. And please do join us again next Wednesday at 1 p.m. on katb.org or right here on 89.3 FM in Anchorage. You can also find us on our Facebook page at Living Well Radio and also look us up on iTunes and follow our podcast there, Living Well. Thank you. <laughs>